The Kings start their three-game road trip with a great performance in St. Louis. We'll talk about Gabe Velarde looking to lead the NHL in goals, Kevin Fiala racking up the points, and the Kings maybe getting on track. We'll recap last night's win over the Blues and preview the Kings game in Dallas tonight against the Stars. All that coming up on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. At last check, we were at 815 subscribers as we start November. Our next goal is 900 by the end of the month. Let's see if we can uh, hit another goal. We've been doing it so far over the months. Uh, Thank you to all who have subscribed and have supported the YouTube channel and, uh, Please recommend it to your fellow Kings fans if you don't mind. My name is Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years. For the past 20 plus years, I've been at the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years. And of course, a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 plus years. The Kings started their three-game, five-day road trip in St. Louis against the Blues last night. LA looking to build off a solid win over Toronto on Saturday. And in that game against Toronto, the Kings made some lineup changes to shake things up. And not surprisingly, uh, they kept those same lines together for their game against the Blues. That would be Andre Kopitar at center, Adrian Kempe on the right wing, and Gabe Velarde on the left wing. We had the usual second line of Philip Deneau at center with Victor Arvidsson on the right side and Trevor Moore on the left side. Uh, Pretty much an entirely different third line than we've seen for most of the season. Rasmus Kupari, the recent call-up. Playing at center, you had Kevin Fiala move down from the top line to the third line on the left side and Carl Grundstrom on the right wing. And then the third line, Blake Lazat at center, Brendan Lemieux on the left side and Arthur Kaliev on the right side. Uh, The defensive pairings uh, were Mikey Anderson and Drew Doughty. We had Matt Roy and Sean Dursey together on the second pairing and the third pairing of Alex Edler and Sean Walker again in the lineup for Brant Clark and Jonathan Quick would be in net the scratches for la were forwards quentin byfield who missed his third straight game due to illness and reportedly didn't fly out with the team also jared anderson dolan and as we mentioned defenseman brant clark Uh, as for the game against the blues uh, if you've paid attention uh, the kings have been known to allow an early goal or two as a matter of fact the first shot has gone in against the kings uh, four times this season so of course the important question against st louis on this uh, start of the road trip was what kind of start would the Kings have? And uh, St. Louis was held without a shot for about the first four minutes of the game, but LA's AG, uh, Adrian Kempe got called for hooking. Um, there was a big save by Jonathan Quick on blue sniper Vladimir Tarasenko on the ensuing power play to help keep the Blues off the board and keep the game even. Uh, just over halfway through the opening period, the Blues had a penalty called on them, and LA's Kevin Fiala would jump over the boards to give the Kings the extra attacker. Fiala would make a beautiful pass from the boards near the top of the left face-off circle to Gabe Velarde on the doorstep for a tap-in goal. Velarde immediately pointed to Fiala to let everyone know how great of a pass that was and to give him the credit he was deserved. Uh, as for Velarde, he remains red hot with a goal in four straight games. We'll have more on him coming up in a second. Uh, in the second period, the Kings would score early and often. Rasmus Kupari, perhaps inspired by Kevin Fiala's great pass, Made a great pass of his own from the top of the right face-off circle to call Grundstrom at the side of the net for another tap-in goal that made it 2-0 Kings. A minute and 22 seconds later, Andre Kobotar scored a tap-in on a give-and-go with Gabe Velarde to make it 3-0. Two minutes and 33 seconds later, Arthur Kaliev scored on the power play. Victor Arvidsson putting a shot on goal. St. Louis goalie Jordan Bennington made the initial save, but LA's Trevor Moore made a nice one-handed pass over to a wide-open Kaliev at the side of the net. That made it 4-0. Two minutes and 20 seconds after that, Carl Grundstrom scored his second of the period on a shot on a rush that appeared to go off the stick of St. Louis defenseman Justin Falk and over the shorter, uh, shoulder of Jordan Bennington. Uh, so to recap, in a span of six minutes and 15 seconds, the Kings scored four goals, breaking the game open and sending goalie Jordan Bennington to the bench for St. Louis. So finally, how would the Kings close out a game when they had a solid lead? 
because as we've seen in the new NHL, some of those leads, two, three goal leads are not what they used to be back in the old days. Uh, so the game certainly wasn't over. The Kings needed to close the door uh, and close out the victory. Um, well, they, they played a pretty solid uh, third period. Um, St. Louis didn't get many chances. Um, there were a couple of penalties the Kings did take at the very end of the second period, and it bled over to the third, so they had to kill that off. And then in the final minute, also another penalty the Kings had to kill off. But overall, a very solid third period, and the Kings close it out with a 5-1 victory to start off the road trip. LA moves over 500, now 6-5 and five on the season with that win over St. Louis. We're going to get more in depth into this win and talk about what we were encouraged by with this victory. Uh, but first, uh, the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. Simply Safe protects you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home. Or can't be reached. Simply Safe can also detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL and save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Uh, visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. There is no safe like Simply Safe. So obviously, there was a lot of good in the LA Kings win over St. Louis. And it seems clear the shakeup of the lineup has had a positive effect on the Kings so far. As for some specific things about last night's game, uh, the passing was fantastic uh, on most of the Kings' goals. The Kings had basically tap-in goals thanks to great passes. The passes basically made the goals. Kevin Fiala led the way with three assists, including the primary assist on goals by Gabe Velarde and Carl Grundstrom's second goal. Uh, Fiala is leading the Kings right now with 10 assists so far on the season. Um, and he uh, did a lot of that in Minnesota uh, in his career, especially last year. Kevin Fiala, I think it's pretty clear. A couple of uh, his uh, biggest assets as far as what his game is. And number one is his ability to hold the puck and carry the puck and maintain possession. Uh, and number two is uh, just his vision on the ice and the way he sees things, the way he sees his teammates and the way he's able to deliver passes really in the perfect position to where a player can get off a shot quickly. And that can certainly make the difference in whether a goal is scored or not. So Kevin Fiala, give him credit. Um, you know, you could call it a demotion, I guess, being dropped down from the second to the third line. Um, but it doesn't seem to have affected him at all. It doesn't seem like he's upset about it. Or if he is, maybe he's channeled that into elevating his play because of late, Kevin Fiala has played some of his best hockey in his early uh, LA King season and uh, had a great game against St. Louis. Uh, again, the passing, um, him adding, you know, even though he's been demoted, if you want to call it that, down to the third line, um, he's still playing on the number one power play for the Kings, and he's a key component in that power play, uh, looking a lot better than it did last year, at least as far as the eyeball test goes. The numbers still need to, to be better as far as their percentage. Um, but just the way they move the puck now uh, across the ice, the, the the long passes kind of from the boards to the boards, um, those things can be very effective in finding open people. So Kevin Fiala, great game uh, against St. Louis. Gabe Velarde, we've talked a lot about him and, and understandably so, uh, continues his amazing and unexpected start to the season. His eight goals not only leads the Kings, but he is one goal behind Oilers superstar Connor McDavid for the NHL lead in goals, McDavid has nine and Velarde has eight. So uh, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, <laughs> early in the season for the LA Kings, I did not expect to have Gabe Velarde's name associated with Connor McDavid as far as goal scoring. But um, as we had the email on yesterday's show, uh, one of the listeners talking about how happy he was for Gabe Velarde and the success he's having. Uh, yeah, it's been so far uh, better than anyone could have expected for Gabe Velarde. The season he's having so far has been unbelievable. Uh, can he keep it up? That remains to be seen. Um, I don't see anything in his game that would make me think that he can't keep this up. Uh, it's not like he's scoring a bunch of lucky goals, right? He's not the second coming of Luke Robitaille, although the lucky nickname for Luke was a bit of a misnomer, but uh, yeah, it's not like pucks are deflecting off skates for him. Uh, he's he's putting the puck exactly where he wants it. 
Uh, he's showing great hands. Um, he's showing great positioning on the ice. He's getting first power play uh, unit uh, minutes. Uh, and he's now on the on the top line. He's going to get more and more opportunities to score. So as long as that lasts, we'll see. But uh, he's Gabe Velarde has been everything the Kings could have expected and more. It seems like no matter where they plug him in, he's comfortable playing with just about anybody uh, and and putting the puck in the net. So we just hope it keeps going for Gabe Velarde. It has been an amazing start to the season, and he's one of the biggest stories so far early in the NHL as far as surprising players that have kind of come out of nowhere, so to speak. Elko, he's a former first-round pick, so obviously we knew the talent was there, but the season he's having is just, just tremendous, and he's been um, – such an asset for the Kings so far. Um, how about the new third line? Um, the, the season started with Quentin Byfield centering the third line with Alex Iafalo and Arthur Kaliev. And uh, the last couple of games, it's been completely different. Rasmus Kupari uh, called up, as we mentioned, from Ontario because of the illness to Quentin Byfield. We know that uh, Alex Iafalo is on long-term injured reserve right now. So that has kind of opened up a spot, if you want to call it that, for Kevin Fiala to slide down on the left side on that third line. Uh, and then adding Carl Grunstrom there as well. I've always thought that Grunstrom fit really well on the fourth line, but he's done a nice job on the third line as well. And just a small sample size, but so far so good. Uh, that line accounted for two goals and four assists in the win over St. Louis. And Erasmus Gupari uh, has been looking great since his call up from Ontario. He's been very active. He's brought a lot of energy to the lineup and even some physical play. Um, he's got good size and, and nothing against Quentin Byfield. But frankly, um, with his illness, I don't know what his situation is, but I'd go ahead and tell him, uh, even if he's feeling better, you know what, go ahead and stay home. Uh, just sit out this road trip and then we'll we'll reassess once we get back home. But the way Rasmus Kupari is playing as centering that third line, I'm not moving him out of that spot uh, anytime soon. We'll see how it goes, but a great start to the season for Rasmus Kupari, another player who's uh, very young and talented and and looking to uh, take a step forward this year for sure. The Kings special teams were good. Um, they officially recorded one power play goal uh, in that win over St. Louis, but they did have the first goal of the game with the extra attacker. So it's it was on a delayed penalty, so not officially a power play goal, but I think realistically you had the extra player on the ice, and that's kind of like a power play goal. Um, so I, you know, I kind of consider that part of uh, the special teams for the Kings. And also they were four for four on the penalty kill. So we know special teams are a very important part of any successful team. And the Kings had a good uh, job with the uh, special teams last night against St. Louis. And Jonathan Quick uh, made some big saves, uh, including a poke check on a 3 on 0 break. Uh, I know Jim Fox has said he didn't know if he'd ever seen that before. It was a very interesting situation because you got a 3 on 0 How does the player carrying the puck in the zone not pass to one of the open players? But he didn't. And uh, Quick, uh, always active with his stick, doing a nice job of, of poking it away. Uh, Quick finished, stopping 27 of 28 shots. Um, got a nice assist from Drew Doughty uh, as well early in the game um, when uh, Doughty slid through the crease with his stick to prevent a wraparound goal as well. So Drew Doughty uh, making a nice defensive play uh, there on that one. So obviously a very, very solid all-around win for the LA Kings, getting it done uh, in multiple ways. Um the offense clearly had a breakout second period, one of the best offensive second periods the Kings have had all season long. And then, like I said, having a lead in the third period, we saw it against Toronto and we saw it again against St. Louis, shutting a team down in the third period, not letting them get back into a game and making it close. So the defense getting the job done as well. It's certainly improving as of late. Special teams, as we said, and goaltending, really the whole package for the LA Kings over the last couple of games. So have the Kings kind of figured it out? Have they realized kind of their identity and, and how they want to play? Um, are they getting on a roll right now? Well, we're going to talk about that uh, as we talk about a preview of their game tonight as the Kings are right back at it in back-to-back -back games. But real quick, I want to tell you, um, thank you for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen today. Now make your second listen game-to-game -game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Audacity app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So I said on Monday's show that I thought the Kings were figuring it out, uh, that maybe it wasn't moving along quite as fast as we would all like. 
but that they slowly but surely were playing better and better hockey. And um, certainly there was nothing that happened in last night's game against St. Louis that would lead me to believe that 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 trend isn't continuing. Um, it will be interesting to see how long they continue with this current lineup. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they decide to do when Alex Ayafalo uh, comes back from his uh, from his injury. Um, but uh, for again, for right now, everything appears to be working uh, really well for the LA Kings, trending in the right direction. But uh, they'll be um, tested again tonight against a Dallas team that has gotten off to a pretty good start. Uh, so we definitely want to talk about that in a moment. But as far as the Kings, you know, I said trending in the right direction. Just looking at some numbers uh, over the first seven games of the season. The Kings allowed 31 goals. Uh, that was an average of 4.4 per game. Over the last four games for the Kings, they've allowed just 11 goals. So that's 2.7 goals per game. So things uh, trending in the right direction uh, for the Kings. We talked about it, that offensively, it's pretty clear uh, with the addition of Kevin Fiala. And we we mentioned uh, Gabe Velarde, of course. Um, and we, we thought going into the season that you know, the Kings would have maybe a couple of the younger players step up in their performance uh, and and help the offensive numbers as well, help them to, the Kings to be a better offensive team. And, and so far, that has been the case, obviously, with Gabe Velarde doing what he's doing, Kevin Fiala as well. So the offense has been there, um, and we just needed to get kind of uh, the defensive end shored up, and it seems like the Kings are certainly doing that. As well, and I, I probably should mention uh, as well that Sean Walker has looked good over the last two games as well, a veteran defenseman coming back from the knee injury in for Brant Clark, which we'll talk about more in a second. Um, but uh, th that's worked. That move has worked out uh, so far as well uh, for the LA Kings. So uh, let's mention Brant Clark now since, since I just brought it up. Um, he did not play uh, for the second straight game. Uh, so we thought because he hadn't played in the season opener and had played every game to that point, we knew kind of what the timeline was going to be for Brant Clark as far as when the Kings were going to have to make a decision on him, uh, whether to keep him in the NHL all season long or send him back to his junior team. And that that timeline has been delayed, has been pushed back because uh, it's it's once you play your ninth game after that, the 10th game is when your entry level contract would kick in. Uh, and so he hasn't played uh, that 10th game. He hasn't played the ninth game yet. So he's still sort of stuck on eight uh, for the time being. So that uh, that timeline, again, has been kind of pushed back, pushed back. Uh, so we will see uh, eventually when he does play that ninth game what the Kings decide to do. But like we said, because of the lineup changes and because of the way the Kings are playing right now with those lineup changes, uh, don't anticipate uh, any any change in that for, for a while, and, and, and we'll see how it goes. But Brant Clark is still waiting to play that ninth game, and the Kings are still waiting to make the decision on what they are going to do with him. So like I said, the Kings are playing back-to-back -back games, I believe, for the second time this season. Uh, both of those back-to-back uh, -back games have been on the road. Uh, tonight, uh, game two of the three-game road trip as they've taken on the Dallas Stars, uh, who are tied for the Central Division lead with 11 points. Uh, the Stars, who made the playoffs last season, uh, didn't make any major moves this offseason. They did have some losses. Uh, they lost defenseman John Klingberg, who signed in Anaheim. Uh, but they did re-sign a couple of their core pieces going forward, and that would be young forward Jason Robertson and standout young goaltender Jake Ottinger. However, uh, some fortunate news perhaps for the LA Kings in that Jake Ottinger, who was off to a fantastic start to the season, uh, left the game uh, this past Saturday against the Rangers with a lower body injury. He's going to be re-evaluated in a week, which means he's not playing tonight. Uh, so that's a break for the Kings because Ottinger had been killing it. Uh, he was leading the league in goals against average at 1.40 and was a, a second in save percentage at 9.52. So uh, again, a little bit fortunate for the Kings not to have to face one of the hottest young goaltenders in the NHL due to injury. And the Kings, you know what, need to take advantage of that. Um, you know, when you get breaks like that, it doesn't guarantee you any kind of a win, obviously. But uh, when, when a key player is out for an opposing team, it's an opportunity for you to take advantage of that, and hopefully the Kings will do that. Um, so that also, speaking of goaltending, means the, the LA Kings playing back-to-back -back nights are going to go with Cal Peterson today with Jonathan Quick getting the win uh, last night. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Cal uh, can continue his strong play as far as what he did in his last outing against Toronto. 
uh, which was his best game of the young season. And that's another storyline to keep an eye on for the LA Kings here early in the season. Uh, the slow start to the season for Cal Peterson. Um, and can he get his game together so he can be a reliable option for the LA Kings in net to try and spell Jonathan Quick when he can, not just on back-to-back -back nights, but kind of sharing more of the load uh, in net with Quick because, as we know, Jonathan Quick is a bit of an older goaltender. Uh, and uh, at some point, uh, Cal Peterson is going to need to help carry uh, part of the burden in net to give Quick some rest uh, down the stretch if he, in fact, is going to continue to be the number one goalie throughout. So uh, Cal Peterson, we talked about the Kings as a team kind of replicating what they've done recently as far as getting their game together, and hopefully the same can also follow for Cal Peterson. Again, played a good game against Toronto and uh, looking to put back-to-back -back games together for him individually uh, as well. Uh, it looks like Scott Wedgwood is going to be the starting goalie tonight for Dallas. Um, he is kind of a journeyman, um, certainly not a number one level goaltender, um, but again, the Kings, uh, you know, can't take anything for granted and not, there's no assured victory just because the other team's, uh, backup goalie has been forced into action. So the Kings though need to take advantage of the fact that, you know, they're going up against a guy who's not uh, a number one goaltender, but is having to fill in, uh, at, at this point, uh, we talked a little bit about St. Louis when we previewed them, how they got off to a hot start. They won their first three games and they've lost every game since I think a five game losing streak now for St. Louis. So um, that also, you know, good teams, when you take on a team that's struggling, you don't give them an opportunity to get back on track. And, and the same can be said a little bit for the Dallas Stars. They also started the year with a three and zero record, but they've lost three of four since now they're still that's still good enough to put them on top in the central division. They're actually tied with Winnipeg for the top spot in the central, which is kind of down at the moment. The central has not uh, been as quite as strong as we thought it would be, at least to start the season. Um, but uh, the, the stars are coming off a loss against the, uh, the New York Rangers on Saturday uh, in the game in which Jake Ottinger got injured. Six, three was the final. So uh, the stars are looking to find their game a little bit right now, kind of like St. Louis was when we took them on. But again, You've got a backup goalie in the net. You've got a team that's struggling a little bit right now. Kings take advantage of these uh, these opportunities. You're taking on a team uh, that uh, is struggling a little bit with their confidence. So hopefully a good start for the Kings tonight uh, against the Dallas Stars. Get a couple of goals early and get them wondering what's going on as far as how they're playing uh, of late. Uh, the Kings will face off against the Stars at 5.30 Pacific time locally. The game will be broadcast on Valley Sports West. Alex Faust and friend of the show, Jim Fox, on the call there. And, of course, also on the LA Kings iHeart Audio Network with friend of the show, Daryl Evans, along with Hall of Famer Nick Nixon on the radio call uh, as well. We'll have a full recap of tonight's game against the Dallas Stars coming up on Wednesday's show and looking forward to hopefully talking about another Kings win, another Kings solid performance as the team looks to get on track after the up-and-down season uh, to start. But things, again, like I said, seem to be trending in the right direction. I think that is encouraging for Kings fans, but uh, you're only as good as your last game. So we'll see if LA can can keep it going tonight with the good all-around play that we've seen over the last couple of games. Uh, if you have any comments about the LA Kings, always encourage your emails. The email address is lockedoneddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, lockedoneddy at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings and on Instagram at Locked on LA Kings. Thank you so much for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen. Now make your next listen Locked on Sports Today. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Audacity app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for watching and listening to Locked on LA Kings. And as always, to close out the show, we say, Go Kings, go.